Hi, welcome to How to Repair. This video is on how to test a washing machine motor. It's an AC motor and it has brushes. We're going to take you through a step-by-step -step procedure on making a test rig. We have been asked by many customers to make this video and we would ask you only to attempt this repair if you are appropriately qualified. Please read the notes below this video if you're on YouTube or on the website. Right, the first thing we're looking at is the label. This is a 220 to 240 volt AC alternating current, 50 hertz. It's about a 311 watt and that equates to about 0.4 of a horsepower. Right, one of the first jobs we need to do is work out all the wiring that goes into the harness. This is the plug you can see in front of you. Now this plug has six terminals, so we're only working on a six terminal plug. Two of them will go to the brushes, two of them will go to the tachometer, and two of them will go to the windings. Right, the first thing we're going to do is work out the wiring configuration on the motor which goes to the plug. These two yellow wires which I'm pointing here go to the taco. This tells the program or the printed circuit board what RPM the motor is doing at any point. So we're going to mark them on our piece of paper. They're going to number three and number four. The next is the field windings or windings and they are going to number five and the other one which is green goes to number one. Then we have two additional wires the red one goes to the brush on one side, which is number six, and the blue wire goes across to the other side to the other brush. Do remember that all different manufacturers of washing machine use different manufacturers for the motor, therefore the wiring is different on each machine, so you will need to check before attempting this test rig. Although we've already checked the wiring uh, by colour, I'm just going to use a multimeter just to show you how to chase them through with it. So set the meter onto continuity and then we'll work out the configuration using the multimeter. So as you can see, the red wire is definitely a brush and it goes on number six. Number two should be, yep, number two is a brush on the blue wire. The two yellow ones we do know are on number three and number four and number five and number one are definitely the field windings. So we don't need the two taco wires which are the two yellow ones on three and four. We're going to put our live into number one, our neutral into number two and we're going to use a jumper wire or just linking uh, number five and number six together which is a brush and a field winding. I've done a diagram here for you to see. On this motor we're going to actually bridge five and six together we're using a jumping wire and one and two we can either put the live in on one or the live in on two and the neutral on the other. Missing out three and four which are not needed because they are for the taco. Right, I've pre-prepared some wires which are fully insulated spades so when actually pushing them in, into the block connector we can't uh, cause a short or anything so they're very well protected. We have our jumping wire which will go on 5 and 6. Then we have an earth wire which goes onto the chassis of the motor. Our neutral wire and our live wire. While I'm connecting this up, do remember to subscribe to our channel and join us on Facebook if you wish. And you can find full information of this test rig and other test rigs at the website. And also, of course, all household appliance repairs from washing machines, cookers, tumble dryers, etc. I'm just threading the wires through one of the lugs on the uh, motor chassis just so they're well out of the way and protected when we start the motor up and it's very important once we have it all connected that we test the circuit again 
Now we're just putting the jumping wire on five and six. So this is one field winding and one brush that we're connecting or jumping. And then the other field winding and brush, we're putting live and neutral, which it's not important which one it goes on. It can go on either way. Now, this is a very important fact. Motors are very powerful. This is uh, 0.4 of a horsepower. So if we started the motor up without having it clamped down, the motor would actually twist on itself. So do make sure it's firmly secured to your bench. The next thing we're doing is connecting the wiring up. I don't expect everyone to have a block connector like this. This is used in the workshops for connecting items up. So you could just normally use uh, an electrical cable and crimp the wires on. On the website you will find um, lots of different uh, test rigs and useful uh, tools that I make for doing appliance repairs. Do feel free to contact us via the website, uh, via email. Uh, we'll do our best to produce any videos that are sought after as quickly as we can. We're trying to produce at least two, three videos a week at the moment. Now what I'm doing here is I'm chasing the wiring through using continuity, making sure that I've got everything correct before powering this motor up. I know I'm checking the wiring three or four times, but I am emphasizing the fact that you do need to get this wiring correct without the mistakes before you actually start the motor. The internet is a great place for learning things, but I can't emphasize the fact that safety is always our main priority. So one last check and then we'll fire the motor up. That's our link on number five and six. Our power feeds, live and neutral, and our earth, which has all been checked. So now we'll start the motor up. Now, as you can see, the way that we've got it configured, the motor is turning anti-clockwise. It's running nicely. I'll just show you the commutator at the back and you'll see some sparks but not many coming from the one brush that's perfectly normal that amount if you do have a lot you could have a problem with your commutator you need to get it checked but i'd already fitted new brushes to this machine now what we're going to do next is reverse the polarity on the motor in other words making the motor spin clockwise what we're going to do is take the neutral wire, which is on number two, and we're going to connect it to number six, which is the other brush. So we're taking the neutral from the one brush on number two to number six, and we're taking the jumping wire from number six to number two. Therefore, we are bridging number five and two together. By doing this, we're actually going to make the motor rotate the opposite direction, in other words, clockwise, as the motor was spinning before in the anti-clockwise direction. You can see me drawing it out for you here in the diagram, but do remember, all motor wirings are different from different manufacturers. Don't just copy what I'm doing, work the scenario out for yourself. So the live is on number one, and the neutral is on number six, and we are linking number five and number two together this time. This reverses the polarity in the motor and therefore we should have a clockwise rotation on the motor. Now we'll just power this up. And as you can see, the motor is rotating clockwise. And there you go. We've tested the motor on both sides. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. Please remember to subscribe to our channel on YouTube, join us on Facebook, and don't forget to come and visit the website. Thanks very much indeed for watching.